next up, Rick Landisberg from Landisberg Design. Where are you, Rick? Arnold Varga. I had to turn off the light so I could see my damn notes. <laughs> Ready. Strangely, like my computer. <laughs> I have puppets in my truck. <laughs> Good sign. Here, here it is. I can't work like this. Uh, okay. I want to show you a bunch of slides from the 1960s. These are extraordinary newspaper ads. They were unlike any that had ever been done before. The cool thing about this work, which was honored all over the world, is that the clients were Cox's department store in McKeesport, Horns, John Wanamaker's in Philadelphia. The man who did them was this extraordinary illustrator and art director named Arnold Varga. The people that I know who know him always use one word about him, and that is he was a genius. He was passionate, playful, fearless, inventive, and one of the most brilliant illustrators and art directors and designers of his era. And he spent his whole life right here in Pittsburgh. He was from McKeesport, had a tough, tough upbringing. His father died in a mill, his brother died in a mill. He had, had hardly any art training, and he wanted to make ads. So okay, here's the newspaper, 1960s, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, looks like shit, look at that, look at those ads. <laughs> Are we snoring? But Pittsburghers, when they turned the page, saw something like this. These fabulous ads, nobody was doing anything like this. Big, full page, fabulous images. Gutsy, newspapers didn't even print color then. It was all out of this man, Arnold Varga's mind. These fabulous, expansive images. Okay, so not, let's not worry about nostalgia here. Okay, designers and architects, let's talk about formal issues. They're wonderfully sophisticated, nuanced images. Look how your eye moves through this composition. They're just these delightful, but sophisticated images. These are all full-page newspaper ads, over 40 years old. Arnold Varga didn't have a particular style, but he had a wonderful sense of visual economy. There's this wonderful, understated quality to these ads, and the look of them changed constantly. And he had a wonderful, wonderful typographic sense. But he worked like nobody else. He didn't do it the right way. He said, hey, I got a picture of a chicken. Let's figure out how to make an ad out of it. <laughs> and that's how he worked. And the writers didn't want to work. You know, the, the, the copywriters, very few wanted to work with him. One of them is here tonight. Ray Werner, raise your hand. <laughs> but you know, he had, he was a, he was a, Interesting guy to work for, as I understand. He once stopped on an illustration rather than do a change he didn't want to do. He once worked all night to redo an illustration that was already accepted. He was an interesting, unusual, and fearless guy. Oh man, do I love this elephant. Um, these ads were so different than what we see today. They were witty and urbane and uncommon. They treated the reader with enormous respect, and he had a way of creating images that were sophisticated and affectionate. I mean, look at his dog. By the 1960s, his work was all over Communication Arts Magazine, Graphis in Europe, Idea uh, uh, Magazine, ID Magazine in Japan. The New York Art Director Show featured his work every year for years. By the way, this is not candy, you dumb dumb, brandy. Okay. 
This ad got a standing ovation at the New York Art Directors Show when it was shown that year. He had this amazing eclectic sensibility. And like Paul Rand and like Milton Glaser, who admired him enormously, it sort of took from everything. It had a big, garrulous, energetic quality to it. I have to tell you, the writing in these newspaper ads was just fabulous. They were so inventive. Uh, it was as if people got a witty story or a tale or a line every day when they looked at these ads. Al Van Dyne wrote this ad. He's my neighbor in Squirrel Hill. He wrote just about every single ad that you see here. Um, uh, this is the full page ad here. Uh, you could see the care that went into these ads. Everyone was hand drawn, letter press printed, before computer type setting. All this justified type had to get absolutely figured out and then set in metal. And if it didn't fit, they just had to do it again. And I think you could see here in this image the degree of visual acuity that went in these ads. Look how the, the exquisite visual tension in these ads. You know, and five cents for the paper, and you just threw it away. He, Arnold Varga, had a special affection for Christmas. This ad, I'll read this to you, this had the greatest title. Rediscover your elf self in Wanamaker's Grand Court. Christmas is like it was when you were little. Fabulous ad. Ray told me, Ray Werner told me that he once at Christmas time went into their offices that the agency worked at and he took little, uh, hundreds of little fruit lifesavers and put them on, glued them to the uh, frosted glass windows so it looked like stained glass from the other side. What a fabulous idea. What a fabulous image. It's just a pleasure to look at. At the 1964 New York Art Directors Club Awards, J. Walter Thompson, the world's largest agency, won four awards. Arnold Varga single-handedly won 28. There were certain ads that really became iconic. And this is one of them. Haunted by ghosts of Christmas presents, brighten your spirits at horns. Just look at that fabulous page. As he got older, he became more and more reclusive. He worked out of his basement in Pleasant Hills. Uh, he, he pushed the, uh, his acquaintances away. By the time he died 15 years ago, he had really become a recluse. And how sad that we don't know his work today. I bet there aren't five people in this room that know about Arnold Varga's work. How sad. And this is why I wanted to talk to you about it, because now you know about him. So, how about if we drink a toast to Arnold Varga? Thanks. <laughs>